Freddie McGregor once told us, you are the most professional artist you have ever worked with. When did you understand the importance of having a long career? Why do you believe so many of our Jamaican artists struggle in the area of professionalism? Well, I, uh, when I met Mr. Freddie McGregor, I mentioned that I met some of the great artists owned by Castor Brown. Mr. Castor Brown, which is new name studio at the time, was situated at the top of um, Maxfield Avenue. And at that time, New Name Studio was the first studio that, that brought about uh, digital recording. A lot of people were saying, um, a lot of the, um, the, 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 um, the older school, because you know, you have digital and you have, um, what's the next? Analog. analog. You have analog and you have digital. And a lot of the analog um, st studio owners, they were, bashing Mr. Castro Brown and saying, well, where am going with all this digital thing? This joke thing, this can't work. But you see, what has happened now because this digital take over the whole world and analog, you can't even get parts for some of the analog machines. And um, them time you had Mr. Derek Barnett playing bass and doing engineering at Castro Brown and then you had Mr. Noel Browning and they were two of the top of the top musicians and engineers. So Mr. Brown knew what he was doing. And when I met Mr. Freddie McGregor, the captain for Big Ship Label, when I met him, you know, he heard me singing some dubs one day and he said, oh, do you know, you're talented. He said, you want to come check me out, you know, give me some rhythms. And I think the reason why he said I was professional, he gave me some rhythms. I think he gave me about six rhythms one, one day and a, and a cassette. And by the time I go home, I just write, I find six songs ready for, for the six with them. So by the next day, we find myself a big ship. And I say, King, I'm ready. And the man say, you ready? I say, yes, King. Because you know when you want something, Emily, you don't want to itch. You don't want to, you don't joke thing Because when I left Manchester coming to Kingston, I said to myself, I come to further my life. And better myself. I don't come to come play around. I come see both of them. You and you to play around with them things. I sing a one song and them, them feel like they achieve the greatest thing in life and stop the song. No. The fee say, if you just make hits and uh, anytime you have free time, I go into the studio. So when, when Father Freddie gave me the rhythms, I think at that time, Mikey Spice was also working on an album for Freddie. But Mikey was taking ages to finish his album, Mikey Spice, you know? <laughs> so, because Mikey is the type, you now we come and do one song, and you now Freddie not see him till the next six months. Man, gone from the night coast, or gone, you know, gone from vacation. By the time he come back, he said, well, ready again. But by the time Spice reached back a big ship, he here say, my album almost finished. Because by the time I go, I'm going to sing six songs after I say, any more rhythms, King? I say, boy, I work hard, you know? So I say, yeah. I'm give me the rhythms, I'm going to carry one. Because the thing about me, them times when I do my music, I never had a chick nor a child. I never had one or woman at them time. Because I said to myself, say, I want to achieve something with my life because it's a thing about the energy. If you have your energy divided in so many different parts, you don't get to focus on what you want to do. And then he said, I find many of my great artists, there was a lot of great artists who could have achieved great things with their life, but them, them, them get caught up in family life and things. I said, it's okay. Wait until you, you set your thing now out. I remember I met, because while I was going from Ar Ar Aquarius to Newnham Studio to, to Lego Studio in Orange Street, and I, 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 I forgot to mention that I met Mr. Sky Eye from Mau Mau Production. But the thing about it, when I, when I met a major name, um, Presley. Presley is a great singer. When I hear Presley sing, I used to say, man, what a man can sing, man. I mean, I always said to Presley, Presley, you have a big in a yard. And Presley said, you think so? I said, what do you mean if I think so? I said, you have a big singer in a yard. I said, you have a Jamaican Presley. And he laughed and he said, well, Oh, it always make me feel good, you know. I want to be about you, you know what I'm saying? No, put, put on a joke aside, yeah, I can't sing in a fire. Then one day, 
person come to me and tell me, say, I'm going to get married. Jesus Christ, God. Say, last year. So I said, Presley, you sure, man? I said, wait on weird, Presley. And Presley said, I made this. Make this check it out. I tell you, God, this is it. You know, can't look no further right now, I tell you, child. She's my destiny. So I said, Presley, just be a little man till you break out, do you do your music? And, you know, I said, I can't wait. Anyhow, Presley went ahead and got married, never invited me to the wedding. And I feel away, I'm not like, come here, I said, the man them asked me for my blessing. Anyhow, from the person married, I don't see back person. Not saying that married life mash him up, you know, but I think he went ahead and we went gone into the church and he's done doing some ministry. I think he lives in Canada at the moment. He's cousin with um his his um Iwain's cousin. You know. So when I met Iwain, Iwain, I showed him say, Yo, person talk about you every day in the yard. And I check Preston. And I must say, well, Long time I hear about you. Long time president I about you, know, singer. I have been there. <laughs> but you know, when I when I finish up my album, I remember I was about on the twelfth song for Shake It Up Tonight album, and I saw Mikey Spice stroll in the studio one day, and I was singing a song about Do You Remember? I was singing a song about it's like a love song, you know. I mean, I said, do you remember? I, I don't have the melody full in my head now, but it was a nice cool love song. I, mean, I said to the girl, say, you don't remember me. You passed me like you don't know me. But try and think, I'm the same guy you knew some years ago. We, we had a good time and, and Mikey came in the studio and Mikey was like laughing at the, the song. But we just start the song, you know, because sometimes when you start a song, it take a time for it to materialize. And, come to fruition. By the time the song finished and Freddie and Dalton, oh God, God bless that Dalton soul. Dalton was a guitarist, but he sing, he sing the harmony also. When they finished the song, you couldn't believe, man. Talk about production. He, he talk about someone who's professional. I have to give it to Mr. Freddie Magica, the captain. Because when I see the type of work I'm put down, I could only follow the same tradition and try and be, uh, like emulate him and, and, and try to be as professional as he. Because all them doing, when I hear about my song, them, I couldn't believe. Because I, I always do the songs and leave. And when I hear about the songs with them, fix the harmonies and overdub, horns and whatever. I felt so good in myself, man. You know? So give thanks. Captain, I know he's going through a little challenge at the time. I'm just send my prayers for him and God bless him, you know. I believe that the younger generation of artists that we see growing up now, they have lost. They, they're missing something. First, many of them don't show the respect for the foundation and try and at least copy or adopt some of the same principles of the icons and those legendaries who, and pioneers who have laid the foundation for us. If we deviate too far from the roots or from the foundation, it's trouble, trouble there. Some of these youths, you can't even talk to them because you hear them cursing them in them song and you try to call them and say, yo, yo, you don't need to use them curse words in a song. Please sing a song that people can listen because if your song can be played on radio, you have to bleep, bleep out, that's not a good sign. So it boils down to respect level the respectability of these artists, it boils down to the true acknowledgement of what they have. Because some of us, some of the younger artists, them just see this as a way of just make it in their life and, and the hype and we just get a fat ride and have a big house on the hill and have some girls that scream out and all them things there. When you hear some testimony of some of these young dancer artists, when I'm going to tell you, say, in boy, he'd gone deep and he was taking pills and taking drugs and, and um, had 50 women one time in one room. And people said, what kind of life them there? If you say, no, man, them here, you come like I'm, I, 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 some different generation, this generation. Can't, we can't live so. 
people. These younger generation need to come back to themselves. And a lot of them are, are, are not trying to live a, a, a life of reality because they're living in a world of fantasy with all this new age of technology and them, every minute them posting up things and TikTok and all these things. And to, to them it's like a fantasy world they're living in right now. And this is why some of these youth they don't take it professionally. You know, when, when, when all a sound man come for dub plates and a man sing one minute what I do and make mistake and the sound man said, my brother, you call that, a name wrong, you know. The man said, no, nah, mama can't fix that, mama can't fix that. I hear testimonies and stories of, of sound man where spend the money and them, them say when them hear the, the, the artist, so, you see a man, I sing a note and when he realize he can't make the high note as as it's in the song. He just cut the note and leave it right there. <laughs> and gone. <laughs> now, if me sing a bad note, I bet. Me, me can't sleep on my bed. Me have to come up and me say, give me a note, me fix up a note. If I sing a bad note in a dub play, me say, because if you sing a bad note, remember it's going to play in the dance, you know. People go hear it and me say, wait, what happened to the Oche? Like, you know, drunk or him, like, him something wrong, man. I, and a luchy that I spliced up that man. So to me, it boils down to one's um, pride. If you take pride in what you're doing, you will definitely have a different approach. It boils down to a personal pride because if you know you're going on stage and you don't cut your nails and make sure so boy, your teeth well brushed and all them things there. Yeah, some of these guys go on stage with all them pants dropping off, no belt, no nothing. They don't have no class. And that is why this generation lasts. Yeah, man. Some of the young ones that, you know, still trying to hold up because, honestly, when I see Roman Virgo and I see, um, money, you know, how he monitors himself and how he adjusts things and how he puts himself together, you can see that there are some who are still trying to hold up a, a thing, you know? I love, I love um, Kibaka Pyramid. I love his energy, his mannerism. I can see the rising prince. He's a, he's a youth where he put on him, make sure he put on him clothes. He look clean, he carry himself. This is what you want to see, you know. Prodigy and all them youth. As some, as some youth where I try to hold up them thing. Chronics, Jesse Royal. Well, to some extent, some of these young, younger artists, might deviate a little from the tradition and because you know them following them peers and their peer pressure and all these things. But you can see when an artist are trying to wall up a thing. Wall up a order, man. You can't drip from the order. You need to wall up a, 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 a you know, a self you have, you have to have self esteem in this thing. Yeah. 